cryptocurrency titan Coinbase providing geo tracking data to ICE. So like I was talking about, maybe this comes out, you know, you got know your customer problems with all centralized exchanges and that, uh, you know, crypto.com is not clear of that. But this is concerning because what you have is essentially a cryptocurrency centralized exchange directly participating with uh, law enforcement. And it kind of goes against everything I believe in for cryptocurrency personally from a, a principled standpoint especially because this is cryptocurrency is supposed to be able to break us free from these types of interactions. Not saying once again, that I condone any sort of uh, illegal activity on crypto with digital currencies or cryptocurrencies, but you don't have to do something illegal to want to essentially protect your privacy and security. And we keep going back to this principle. The problem is, is also as you push those down further and further down the line, more and more people become in the wrong and it's just used as a control tactic. And, and just because a government or an entity says that you're doing something wrong, doesn't actually always mean that morally or ethically you're incorrect. And therefore it's important to provide individual autonomy from these sorts of situations. Let's get into it though. Coinbase, the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the United States is selling immigrations and customs enforcement, a suite of features used to track and identify cryptocurrency users according to contract documents shared with the intercept. In August of 2021, Coinbase sold a single analytic software license to ICE for $29,000, followed by a software purchase potentially worth $1.36 million the next month. But details of exactly what capabilities would be offered to the agency's controversial Homeland Security Investigations Division of were unclear. A new contract document obtained by Jack Polson, director of the watchdog group Tech Inquiry, and shared it with The Intercept, shows ICE now has access to a variety of forensic features provided through Coinbase Tracer, the company's intelligence gathering tool, formerly known as Coinbase Analytics. Coinbase Tracer allows clients in both government and private sector to trace transactions through the blockchain, a distributed ledger of transactions integral to cryptocurrency use. While blockchain ledgers are typically public, the enormous volume of data stored therein can, can make following the money from spender to recipient beyond difficult, if not impossible, without the aid of software tools. Coinbase Markets Tracer for use in both corporate and compliance and law enforcement investigations, touting its ability to investigate illicit activities, including money laundering and terrorist financing. Once again, they will always utilize fear of some sort of illegal activity to influence people to give up their rights and information. And it's very frustrating and connect cryptocurrency addresses to real world entities. According to the document released via a Freedom of Information Act request, ICE is now able to track transactions made through nearly a dozen different digital currencies, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Tether. Analytic features include multi-hop link analysis for incoming and outgoing funds, granting ICE insights into transfers of these currencies, as well as a transaction demixing and shielded transaction analysis aimed at thwarting methods some crypto users take to launder their funds or camouflage their transactions. The contract also provides provocatively historical geo-tracking data, though it's unclear what exactly this data consists of or from where it's sourced. An email released through the FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act, to be clear, shows that Coinbase did not or didn't require ICE to agree to an end user license agreement standard uh, legal, legally that imposes limits on what customers can do with the software. So they can do whatever they want with the software. Essentially, here's a whole bunch of information or here's a piece of software to track people. Uh, we have no end, end user agreement. You can do whatever you want with it. So it's just, you know, fair game to track whoever they want, whenever they want. Not dissimilar from what we saw with the whole Snowden blow up as it pertains to social media. So 
just to be clear, it's kind of a similar in the similar vein. When asked about ICE contract and the data involved, Coinbase spokesperson Natasha LaBranche directed The Intercept to a disclaimer on its website stating that Coinbase Tracer sources its information from public sources and does not make use of Coinbase user data. That's hard to believe. I mean, if this is kind of the data that they're putting in and you know that to tie it to a real world entity, you have to have some sort of know your customer uh, piece there, meaning you need to have the actual piece of data that ties it to the real world entity. What is it? true that coinbase is not tie using utilizing their know your own like know your customer data to these addresses to me it sure feels like it's not um but you know they say it doesn't right as far as uh labranch did not answer questions about how ice is using coinbase tracer nor if the company imposed any limits to that use so they're completely ignoring that question so how are they utilizing it right how are they getting the end user you know information the real world entity information and they ignored it coinbase in recent years has made a concerted effort to pitch itself or pitch its intelligence features to government agencies including the irs secret service and the drug enforcement administration all of which have been in my humble opinion the worst entities within the federal government that have displayed the most overreach and the most amount of the um, <laughs> imposing of their ideals on the American public. I, I just, man, the most overreach that we've seen. We can go back all the way to the early 90s for that one. Earlier this month, Coinbase Vice President of Global Intelligence, John Kothenek, testified before a congr congressional panel that his company was eager to aid the cause of homeland security. Quote, if you're a cyber criminal and you're using crypto, you're going to have a bad day. We are going to track you down and we're going to find that finance and we are going to hopefully help the government seize that crypto. End quote. Whew. Mm. Coinbase's government uh, work has proved highly controversial to many crypto fans, owing perhaps both to the long-running libertarian streak in that community and the fact that these currencies are so frequently used to ver facilitate various forms of fraud. No, you got the you got the latter correct. Sure, libertarian streak in the community. In fact, like if you went through the Bitcoin white paper, it is highly libertarian but to add in that last piece of cryptocurrencies all cryptocurrency users all using it to for various forms of fraud and that's why they're against it is incorrect okay let's be extremely clear that is just you projecting onto the community so that you have a reason to support this type of activity the Coinbase Tracer tool itself was birthed in controversy in 2019. Motherboard reported that Neutrino, a blockchain analysis firm the company acquired in order to create Coinbase Tracer, quote, was founded by three former employees of a of hacking team, a controversial Italian surveillance vendor that was caught several times selling spyware to governments with dubious human rights records, such as Ethiopia, Saudi Arabia, and Sudan, end quote. Following public outcry, Coinbase announced these staffers would transition out of the company. Mm -hmm. Homeland Security Investigations, the division of ICE that purchased the Coinbase tool, is tasked not only with immigration-related matters, aiding migrant raids and de deportation operations, but broader trans uh, transnational crimes as well, including various forms of financial offenses. It's unclear to what end ICE will be using Coinbase. The agency could not be immediately reached for comment. Of course they weren't. So um, it was updated with the Coinbase rebuttal, which we didn't get a lot of information on. And then there was a previous version of this article that you can go check out as well. So what are we learning, right? We are learning that centralized exchanges are basically, you know, ending up being the exact thing that everybody has feared with centralized exchanges. 
which is basically going to be taking user data, selling it to governments and probably corporations at the end of the day, and using it to violate individual rights and in individual privacy and individual security. So uh, under no circumstances should you be basically holding a majority of your finances within uh, Coinbase or any of these centralized exchanges. And once again, we'll say it, we always say it, you know, not your keys, not your crypto. And it gets even sketchier when we get into the, like all the talks surrounding basically use, utilizing it to track you down. We already know that the Fed is kind of, you know, tightening down the tax ramifications uh, in the United States, this is a problem, obviously, because what they're doing is they're taking the burden of a decline economy and putting it on the working class. And by this, we can see that with, of course, the reduction of reported number being down to $600 that you have to report any move of $600. What can you really do with $600 these days, right? Pay your utility bill, maybe pay a car payment, right? That sort of thing. But, you know, everything above that, you know, you, you got your rent is going to be well over $600 or for, for, for most people. Um, so it's clear that they're putting that burden on the people. And it's a lot less, in my opinion, about the fear of illegal activity and a lot more about the government putting the burden the federal government putting the burden of their mess up with the economy onto the people. And this is not dissimilar from other transitions we've gone through as far as industrial age, or of course, even going all the way back to the agricultural age and the Roman empire. This is where we end up. So I do believe the more I read this stuff that we are closer and closer to uh, the, the difficult times within the digital transformation. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.